All right, welcome back to module 3.6. In this video, let's take a look at how we're going to convert fractions into decimals. Okay, every fraction can become a decimal. And the way we do it, um, the way we convert is simply divide the fractions. So for every proper fraction we have, we can convert them into decimals simply by dividing. So proper fraction will result um, a decimal number on the number line is always going to be between 0 and 1, okay? Because any decimal number between 0 and 1 will say 0 point something. So every proper fraction is part of a whole, all right? So it got to be within um, 0 to 1. So for the 17 over 20, very important that you see the 17 is the dividend. 20 is a divisor. <coughs> so the saying is, whatever is on the whatever goes first, or whatever is on the top, goes to the inside. Okay. Sorry about that. All right. Whatever's on the top or whatever is in the front goes to the inside. All right. The divisor always go on the outside. So change the fraction to decimal form, run to the nearest thousands. So my divisor is already whole number, so the decimal is behind the 7. I need to run to nearest thousands, so I need my tens, hundredth, and the thousandth place. But does my thousandth place go up or stay the same? That depends on what the ten thousandth place is. Okay. So once I know what this digit is above the ten thousandth place, then I know how to round. All right, so 17 cannot go, excuse me, 20 cannot go into 17, so that will be zero time, just like we predicted. Proper fraction will always be zero point something. So now let's view this as 170. Two go into 17 about eight times, so that will be 160. If I subtract, that's 10. Bring down the next zero. <coughs> <coughs> All right, two go into 10. 5 times, so that will be 5 times 20 is 100. So that's a 0 right here. So basically, I can stop. All right? I can actually stop right here. So my answer is 0 0.85. But since the problem want me to run to near thousands, okay, so I had to show the thousandth place. So there's, so there's really no more digits after the 5 other than 0. So I would just simply put a 0 behind the 5 to show that um, I actually round, you know, to show my thousandth place, even though I did not, did not have to round in this problem. I still have to write that down. It's because I'm afraid if we don't, the homework might not recognize um, without the 0 behind the 5. All right, let's do the same thing, okay? Run to nearest thousands. So that would just be like this problem. All right, so 31 over 87. So this is a proper fraction. My answer will also be zero point something already. So, all right, 31. 87 goes outside. That's my divisor. Decimals behind the one. So I need tenth, hundredth, thousandth. That's the digit I need to round. So let's add one more zero to at the ten thousandth place, so I know what my thousandth place is going to round to. Uh, let me see. Let me move this down a little bit. So 87 go into 31 zero times. So let's take a look at um, this as 310. 8 go into 31 about 3 times, right? 3 times 7 is 21, carry 2. 3 times 8, um, 24. 24 plus 2, 24 plus 2, uh, 26. All right, if I subtract, that's a 9, that's a 0, so that's a 4, that becomes 2. So print out the next 0, 8 going to 49, uh, 5, 6. Um, 8 times 6 is 48, I think that's too close. I think that will go over, so let's do 5 times. 5 times 7 is 35, carry 3. 5 times 8 is 40, plus 3 is 43. Subtract, that's a 5. This is A minus 3, which is 5, which is good. 55 is less than 87, so I'm good. 
bring down my zero from the thousands place. So eight go into fifty five. Eight times seven is fifty six. So eight times six then. Six times seven. Forty two. Six times eight is forty eight. Forty eight plus two. Fifty two. All right, I will subtract. That's eight. That's two. Four minus two is two. That's twenty-eight. I'm good. All right, bring down this zero right here. I don't have to finish it. I just need to know what this digit is on the on top of the ten thousand place. Eight going to twenty-eight. Uh, got to be about three times because eight times four is thirty-two. So this is gonna be three. So that will make my six stays the same. All right. So, um, my answer is going to be 0 0.356. All right. Now, if I will have keep going, so this is it. But let's pretend I keep on going. 3 times 87 is 261. Eventually, what's going to happen is either my Decimal values, decimal places will end. All right. Or it's going to show some sort of repeating pattern. So 280 minus 261, that's a 9. All right. That's 7 minus 6, which is 1. So if I would just pretend bring down another 0, this is 190. And we have not seen any 190 yet. What we have seen so far, every top numbers... 310, 490, 550, 280, 190 now. Once I once once I finishing subtracting, okay, eventually I will begin to repeat myself with the 310, 490, 5, 550. So that's the repeating pattern sometimes when we're dividing fraction. For example, a, a very simple fraction would be one third. One divided by three quickly, for example, um, Three cannot go into one at zero times. So three going to ten, three times as a nine. So I'm repeating myself, okay, with threes now. Three times three is nine. That's one. Bring down another zero. So I constantly having this same number up top here. So that's the repeating pattern. So point three, okay, this is just gonna keep on being three. So that's the reason why we say one third is is actually point three. Repeating with the repeating bar on top. So this one right here, the 31 over 87, eventually is going to hit the, repeat, the repeating pattern. Okay. So as long as my decimal places has a repeating pattern, then that type of decimal number will be able to convert into a fraction. Okay. If the decimal places have no repeating pattern whatsoever, like the pi, pi is actually not just 3.14. It's actually 3.14159926 dot 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 means it keep on going. All right. There is no repeating pattern of any sort, okay, for the pi. So that's the reason why these type of decimal okay, can never convert into a fraction. So any type of decimal number cannot convert into a fraction. We call those the irrational numbers, okay? We call those irrational numbers. So as long as we have some sort of repeating pattern, okay, even though we don't hit it right now with this example, as long as we got repeating pattern, those are called the rational numbers. So that makes sense. I, I, I did mention every fraction is a decimal, but not every decimal can become a fraction because we call those the irrational numbers. All right, let's try again, okay? Um, so this one says, express the following fraction in decimal form as a terminating decimal or as an infinite repeating decimals. So, so, um, Terminating decimal simply means there is a last digit, okay? Like this 5 was the last digit, okay? It terminated at, at the 100th place. 
if it does not terminate, okay, it will have some sort of repeating pattern. Okay, and that repeating pattern will never end. All right, so 11 over 20. So this is 11 divided by 20. So dividend is 11, goes inside. What is on top goes inside. What is on the bottom goes on the outside. So let's just, uh, it doesn't tell me where to round to, so I'm just going to add a couple of zeros here. If I need more, I would just put more. 20 cannot go to 11, so that will be zero times. So let's look at this as 110. Because I use 5, right? 2 going to 11 about 5 times, which is 100. So 1, 0, 0. So 20 going to 100, 5 times. Exactly. So this problem, the terminating decimal is the 100th place. So my answer is exactly 0.55. So theoretically, what's behind the 5 is actually infinite number of zeros. Okay, I'm not writing those down because um, there's really no need to because uh, I know it terminated at the 5. If it does not terminate, that means it will have some sort of repeating pattern. So we use the repeating bar to represent those. All right, this example is a proper fraction. I don't know if y'all noticed that. 17 over 12 is a proper fraction, which most of y'all kind of already know. This is going to be 12 going to 17 about one time. All right, so I kind of already know my answer will be slightly over 1. So whatever is on the top goes to the inside. Whatever is on the bottom, which is divisor, goes to the outside. So decimal is behind the 7. Let me just get myself a few zeros just in case I run into repeating decimals. 12 going to 17 one time, that's 12. So that's 5, bring down the 0. 12 going to 50 about 4 times, because 4 times 12 is 48. So that's a 2, bring down the next 0. <coughs> 12 going to 20 about 1 time, that's 12. That's 8, bring down the next 0. So that's go right there, that goes right there. The, this is the third 0 I added. All right, 80, 80. 4 is 48, 5, 6, 6 will be 72, voila, see, when I subtract, I get another 8, so if I pretend there's another 0 there and bring it down, this is actually 80 again, just like right here, <coughs> that's the same 80, so that means I am forced to use another 6, which will give me another 72, which will give me another 8, which if I have another 0 back right there, bring it down. See, I'm repeating my what? My, my remainder keep on having 8, which bring down another 0, make it 80. So basically that tells me that the 6 is going to begin to repeat itself. So this answer, since it does not tell me, tell me to round, is actually 1.5. 0.416 repeating. Only the 6 is repeating. Okay, so now I can, you know, now once I know it's a repeating pattern, if I need to round, if the problem tells me to round, I know how I need to round it now. Okay, that's a repeating. So, what happened if this? This is where it's weird. If I will give you a repeating pattern, 1.17 repeating, and this 1 and 7 repeat. How would you know what fraction that is? What type of improper fraction that's going to be? You don't know. You really cannot actually do this just simply by reading it like we've done before because you cannot read the repeating pattern properly. So that's the reason why uh, when we get to Module 4, we will, we will begin to use calculator because this calculator can, can actually convert this into an um, improper fraction for me, okay? So that's the reason why this course, uh, Math 106, will still need to learn how to use calculators after the first three module. Then we'll begin to use calculators. Then we can understand a little bit better, okay, how these decimals, fractions, and whole numbers operate. All right, so that will conclude this lecture video on conversion between 
uh, from fraction to decimal. Thank you for watching.